you're gonna dye your hair with box dye, aren't you? And you totally have that box right in front of you, don't you? I know you do. And now you're looking on YouTube because you want to find a tutorial that's gonna help you and guide you, give you some tips and tricks so that you don't completely ruin your hair. Well, you have come to the right place. My name is Gabby and I am a licensed hairdresser. And today I'm going to dye my client Emily's hair with box dye and I'm gonna teach you some tips, tricks, techniques, tools of trade, give you all the insider deets on how you can achieve beautiful salon quality color right at home. Now let's take a moment of silence so that we can let hairdressers online verbally attack me in the comment section. Now that we got that out of our system, let's go. Now I want to introduce you to my beautiful client, Emily. I have been cutting Emily's hair for several years now, but she has always done her own color. She's always preferred it that way. She knows the color she likes. She knows how she wants to do it and she likes to save the money. So Emily's been coming to me for cuts and I really actually admire her color. I think she does a great job of it. I think it looks beautiful on her skin tone. The last time I was cutting her hair, I asked her if I could actually dye her hair using the box dye that she uses on camera so that I could teach you guys how to do it in the most professional way. So Emily agreed and that's why she's here today. I'm really, really happy to have her. Now, before we get right into the meat of the video, I just wanna say that I am not the hairdresser that's gonna shame someone for box dyeing their hair. And if you are the hairdresser that does that, then maybe you should reconsider that because everyone has different reasons for why they box dye their hair, whether that's because they don't have the money to go to the salon, they don't have the means, for a million other reasons that we may not understand and it is their choice to do what they want with their hair. And as hairdressers, we need to respect that choice and we need to still provide them with excellent quality service. We need to be able to address their needs. If they have decided to box dye their hair and it hasn't gone well, as hairdressers, it's not our responsibility to lecture them or to make them feel really bad about it. All we can do is educate and guide and that's it. Now. I'm not gonna say that box dye is perfect. There are a lot of reasons why it's not. And I made a whole video about it and my opinions on why box dye often goes wrong. Color is tricky and color theory is tricky and all of the things that you need to know as a stylist to create really great color results, all of that is really tricky to execute. And a box can't think. A box doesn't customize for the client's texture and porosity and color history and end goal. But regardless of that, clients are still gonna wanna do it. And maybe you wanna do it right now, and that is absolutely fine. So these techniques aren't replacing salon quality. They are not replacing a stylist at all, but if you're gonna do it anyways, you might as well do it right. So these tips and tricks will really help you get the best results out of the box dye that you are doing. So let's start with formulation. So as you can see, Emily is a natural level six. You can see it right in her roots and she has a bit of gray. So she wants gray coverage. Gray coverage is something that's very important to her. The box color that Emily uses is Clairol, nice and easy. And she chose the color 6R, which is a light auburn. Now I'm I'm gonna tell you why this box dye actually works for Emily and also what to look for when you're looking for a box dye that you want to also work for you. If you look at the back of the box, you can see that this is long lasting color that covers 100% of grays. Now this is really important. If you are looking for gray coverage, you have to make sure that on the box, it says that it covers 100% of grays. And the reason for that is because gray coverage is formulated differently than colors that are not for gray coverage. In my one box dye video where I was comparing different box dyes and different shades of red, a lot of those boxes actually specifically said that it is not for gray coverage. So be very careful with that when you're selecting your box because if you're looking to cover it and it's not meant to cover it, it's not gonna cover it and then you'll be disappointed. Another thing that you absolutely have to look at when you're looking for box dye is the color shade chart. Emily is a level six, which is a medium brown. So this box will work for her and will give her this tone of color. If Emily was a dark brown like me, for example, I'm very, very dark, almost, you know, like a soft black. This box wouldn't do anything for me. Like it wouldn't change my hair at all, or maybe it would just kind of make it really brassy or weird, but it would definitely not give me this color. You have to fall into the colors here in order for this to work for you. If you do not fall into these colors, the box will not work for you and it will look terrible. 
period. That's the end of it. That's just the truth. That's reality, okay? Now that you've found a box that you know will work and you know approximately what your hair will look like depending on where you fall in that color chart and what your result will look like according to the box, now you can start coloring the hair. Now, here is a great tip that I'm gonna give you when you are doing a full coverage. What you wanna do is you want to divide your hair into four quadrants. So you want to divide your hair through the front, right, you know, behind the ear. All of that hair here comes forward. All of that hair on the other side comes forward and then you can have your part line or you can do a middle part and you're going to have two sections at the front. Then you're going to divide the back of your head straight through the middle and you're gonna have your one side as a quadrant and your other side as a quadrant. So now you have four parts. This is really, really important because it's going to allow you to have perfect and even saturation of color throughout the whole head. If everything is evenly saturated, you're going to get an even end result. My next tip is to get yourself a bowl and a brush. You can get this on Amazon. It's not expensive and I'll leave links in the description box below. It is really, really hard to apply perfect precise applications with a bottle and with a nozzle you really do need to have the control of a brush so that you can evenly saturate everything and so that you can stop at the demarcation line or the hair that's been previously colored before now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on the areas where you need the most gray coverage and that's the areas that you see the most and the areas that other people see right away when they look at you so that's the front of your face you're going to take your brush and you're going to sweep that hair back creating a perimeter around your face. Now you want to move along and work quickly because you want things to process evenly. What you want to do here is move down the head and divide the hair into half inch sections, making sure to not only saturate the bottom, but also the top. This will ensure a hundred percent gray coverage. We're going to do the exact same thing in the back, getting that product on every part of the root and stopping where we have coverage already from the previous dye job. If you're someone who colors your hair regularly, then it's very important to know that when you're doing a root coverage with previously dyed ends, you have to do your roots first. And that's because roots need more processing time to cover. And if you do roots to ends right away, you're gonna have an over-processed mid shaft and especially an over-processed end. If you don't need to refresh your ends, don't. When it comes to color, we want to minimize damage as much as we can, and box dyes are significantly more harsh than salon quality color. So if you're gonna do it, you wanna make sure to go easy. If you're the type of person that does your roots every four weeks because you have a lot of gray and it drives you crazy, you don't wanna pull it through every time. You wanna look at that mid shaft, you wanna look at that end, you wanna see if it's lost its color, if it's looking uneven, if it needs to be refreshed. If it doesn't need to be refreshed, do not pull it through. If it does need to be refreshed, I'll give you a few techniques on how you can do it and still maintain a healthy end result. So as you can see here, her hair is uneven right now. It's definitely very faded. And if we didn't refresh them, her roots would be darker than her ends. Because this box dye is covering gray, you know that it has a high level of developer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna process these roots for 20 minutes. And the reason I'm picking 20 minutes isn't like I picked it from nowhere, it's a standard time. It's because that's what it said in the instruction. For gray coverage, if you're doing your roots, this specific box dye is 20 minutes. Goldwell, the professional line that I use to cover gray is 45 minutes. And a lot of the other box colors that I've been exploring like L'Oreal Feria, they're like 30 minutes. Every color line is different. So you have to make sure to read the instructions so that you know how long to process it for. This is not a situation where more is more. You, you don't wanna think, oh, I have a lot of grays. So I'm gonna leave it on for an hour. Don't do that. Listen to the instructions because you could over process your hair, cause a lot of damage, or even end up with something like hot roots. Now what I did after those roots processed for those 20 minutes, I pulled the color through section by section, and then I set a timer for five minutes. I like to check the hair as it's processing with my fingers, so my gloved hands, I like to spread the hair and see if it's absorbing properly into the hair and creating an even result. Now, when I am toning or I am refreshing 
refreshing ends, I really like to keep an eye on it because sometimes it, you'll think that you need 10 minutes but you really only need five and then you rinse it away and it's perfect. So just stand by the mirror and keep checking every few minutes to see if you've gotten that end result that you want. Something else that you can do for your ends, I didn't do it with Emily, but it's a very, very good option is to spritz your hair. So your roots are processed, you're just refreshing your ends, spritz it with water so that it's a little bit damp and then apply the formulation. What the water is gonna do is it's going to protect your hair a little bit, it's also going to to dilute the formulation of the color. So it's going to just add that refresh tone, but in like a less harsh way. Another huge, huge tip that I have for you is that when you are box dyeing your hair, you have to buy at least two boxes. If you have longer hair or thicker hair, then you're gonna wanna buy three. So Emily has shorter hair and her hair is pretty fine. I mean, it's mid-length hair, but her hair is quite fine. And we used two boxes. I didn't use two full boxes, but I still needed the second box for the refreshing of the ends. The first box was good for the roots. The second box was needed for the refresh of the ends. There is nothing worse, and this has happened to me in the salon before, when you do half your hair and you realize that you've run out of color. You are so screwed when that happens. So if you have dense, thick, long hair, buy four boxes. And if you have to return some, then return some. But if you have even fine hair, just buy two boxes just in case because you would be surprised as to how often you would need it, especially if you were applying it like I taught you previously in this video and you're being cognizant of, you know, fully saturating the strands and moving section by section to create a really perfect even end result. So as you can see here, we have 100% gray coverage. We have even color from roots to ends and a shiny, beautiful result. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember that box dye is tricky. It is not easy. So definitely, if you can, go see a professional, especially, especially if you want a big change. If you can't go see a professional or you just want to do it yourself, I hope that these tips are really helpful in guiding you towards getting a really great end result. If you like this video, then you may find these ones really interesting next. I will see you next week. Bye.